This procedure demonstrates the internal components for the 7000 series valve. This is the disassembly process for the Flex 7000. This particular unit has our SXT controller. We begin by removing the screw that holds it to the front. We then remove the connection for the motor, the connection for the power supply, and if yours is installed, the meter connection. Once the cables are removed, we press our finger in on the notch, pressing over and forward in order to remove it. As we move to the top of the valve, we can see that this unit was installed with an optional auxiliary switch. We remove the screw in the front. We then move to the screw in the rear and just loosen it so that we can rotate the switch out of the way. We can then remove the motor. This is held in by two screws, one in the rear and one in the front. Once those screws are loose, we pull the motor up from the unit. We now have access to the brine cam that is on the top. In the service position, there will be an arrow that goes from the center towards the back of the unit. We need to rotate this around so that it lines up with the arrow that is on the rib pointing towards the center. Using a 3 8 wrench or socket or driver, we rotate it around until they line up. Once they line up, we press the tab in and begin to pull up on the cam. The cam may become jammed on the brine valve. To remove, we can pull up and try to press in on the brine valve slightly. If this does not free it, we can use a slotted screwdriver to try and pull back on the brine valve to allow us to get it off. We can now move to the bottom of the unit for our disassembly process. From the bottom of the valve, we can untuck the cables for the unit. This will be our power lead, as noted by the power on the back plate. And if yours is so installed, you can also untuck the meter cable. This allows us to have access to the screw that holds the drive assembly to the back plate. This screw is the same size as the one that holds the circuit board to the front of the drive assembly. Newer production units will have a screw that goes through the piston shaft into the drive assembly. This needs to be removed in order to get the power head off. Once this is removed, there are two tabs that are at the bottom between the drive assembly and the back plate. We pull those forward and pull up on the assembly. We can then pull it forward to remove it from the unit. We can then pull the cables through the back plate to give us better access. Once that is off, we can see we have three screws for the main piston and one screw for the brine valve. We remove all four screws in order to remove the back plate. Once we remove all four screws, we align the top of the piston so that it will pull through the back plate. This gives us access to our main piston and our brine valve. To remove the brine valve, we pull straight forward from the body. This allows us to inspect the O-ring check any openings for debris, and press down to make sure there is no scoring or debris on the seal. If we need to replace this, it is essential to make sure you use one that is designed for the 7000 valve. This valve is similar, but is of a shorter height and is designed for a 5600. This valve also looks similar, but is slightly shorter and has the rib on the top, which is designed for our 9000 series. Only the one that is designed for the 7000 has the correct amount of length in order to reach the brine cam. Inside this opening, there is also an O-ring. We want to make sure that we remove this 
and check to make sure that it is solid and there is no damage or debris in there. We would want to replace this as necessary and re-lubricate during reassembly. We now have access to our main piston. We pull the end cap and the piston rod straight forward from the body. There are three pistons that are available for the 7000 valve and we want to make sure that we match the correct piston for the flow. This is a softener piston with our standard flow. We also have a high flow softener piston of the same height but has the gray end cap and a deeper groove. There is also a piston that is available for filters. It is a shorter piston and does not have all of the additional ribs for the brining cycle. We now have access to the seals and spacers for removal. We recommend using a hook or other tool to remove the seals. There is also a tool for the removal of the spacers. Spacers go on and then when you press in, the fingers go out in order to grab onto the spacers. It is important to make sure that we count the number of seals and spacers during removal. For this particular valve, there are five seals and four spacers. It is essential to make sure that all of the materials are removed in order to ensure that the spacers are going to line up with the flow path. When we remove the seals, we want to inspect them to make sure there is no cracking or damage. If any of them is damaged, we want to replace it as a set. We now have access to the units that are on the rear of the unit. We begin with our brine refill flow control. This can be removed by pulling upwards on the gray clip. Once that is removed, we have access to the refill flow control assembly. This pulls forward from the body. There are different sizes for the connection as well as different sizes for the brine flow control. Make sure that this orifice matches what your unit was designed for to make sure the correct amount of brine is developed by the unit. This orifice can be cleaned with warm water and a soft brush. If it cannot be cleaned, it must be replaced. We can now move to the injector assembly. To remove, we need to take the red clip out. We use a slotted screwdriver using the brace and pulling to the rear of the unit. We now use the brace that is on the side and pull up on the cap. We can inspect the o-ring to make sure that it is not damaged and is sealing properly, replacing any components as necessary. From the top, we now have access to our screen and injector assembly. The screen has a tab on it that we pull to the top. We want to inspect the screen to make sure there is no damage to it. Any debris can try to be cleaned out and replacement should be done if this cannot be cleaned. We can now move to remove the injector. We use the red clip with the end that has the notch in the bottom. We place this onto the edge of the injector and pull to the top. We do not want to twist as it may cause the unit to disassemble. You can take the injector and break it apart. This is a multi-piece design so that you can inspect all of the orifices and check for any debris. If you cannot clear the debris, you would need to replace the injector. Make note, there are many colors of injectors to match with different pressure and operating purposes. Make sure to only use the color that your unit was designed for. In this opening, for filter applications, there will be a plug. You would not need to remove this during the inspection. We can then move to the opposite side of the unit to remove our drain flow control. We begin by moving to the gray clip and pulling it to the rear of the unit. The flow control can now be pulled up from the body. This is sealed by O-rings, so we want to make sure we inspect them if there is any suspicion of a leak. The 90 degree units have the flow control located in the bottom of the unit. We want to make sure it is free from any debris. For note, 
If you have one of the straight connectors, it is slightly shorter. That is because the flow control actually sits below the connector inside the body. We want to make sure that we only use the flow control the unit was designed for. We can now move to the rear of the unit where the meter is located. The cable that came from the control, if yours is installed, pulls straight up from the body. The meter is located just opposite where the cable was. To remove any connectors, we use the brace that is on the back of the body and pull up on the red clips, the same as we did for our injector assembly. Any connectors can then be pulled to the back of the valve. This gives us access to where the meter is inside the unit. We reach in and pull the unit straight to the back to remove the meter. We want to check to make sure it moves smoothly and does not have any noise. If there is noise or not moving smoothly, the bearing is worn and the meter needs to be replaced. For reassembly, we will show the installation of the seal and spacer kit. To begin this process, we want to make sure we have a seal and spacer stuffer tool and a new set of seals and spacers, along with the approved silicone lubricant for the seals. To begin the installation, we take the silicone lubricant and add it to one of the seals. Working it around, we then put it into the end of the stuffer tool. We work it in to the edge of the unit. Once it is secured, we press it inside the body, making sure to seat it by pressing on the unit. We can now take a spacer and put it on the end of the tool. Reversing the tool, we use it to guide the spacer into the unit. We continue with the process, alternating seals and spacers until we get to the end. When we install the last seal, make note that it should sit back from the front face by about 3 16 of an inch. This allows room for our piston to seal up against the side of the body. When we install our piston, we add a small amount of lubricant to the O-ring seal on the cap. We then press the piston in straight, making sure it seats. It is normal for this to sit proud of the front edge by about a sixteenth of an inch. This will compress when the back plate is reinstalled. The remainder of the parts are reinstalled in reverse order of removal. Good luck and thanks for watching.